Have you ever asked yourself how computers actually communicate? Well, in this video, you're going to find out. We'll explore the basics of computer networks, how they work, and how they enable all the digital interactions we rely on every day. From the key concepts and different types of networks to the essential devices that keep them running. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how computers talk to each other. First, let's get familiar with some basic terms. A network is a collection of connected devices designed to exchange data. These devices, called nodes, include computers, servers, routers, and switches. To make sure this data exchange happens smoothly, we use protocols, sets of rules and standards. For example, the HTTP protocol allows your browser to request and receive data when you visit a website. Every device in a network has a unique identifier called an IP address. This helps in routing the data to the right place. There's also a MAC address, a hardware-specific identifier that is unique to each device, unlike IP addresses, which can be reused. IP addresses can be local, for internal networks, or public, for global internet communication. Next, we have ports, which help direct the data to the correct application within a device. And finally, the DNS system translates human-friendly domain names, like google.com, into machine-readable IP addresses. Computer networks come in various forms depending on their scale and purpose. A LAN, or local area network, connects devices in a small area, like your home or office. When you connect wirelessly, you're using a WLAN, or wireless LAN. On a larger scale, we have WANs, wide area networks, that link devices across cities, countries, or even continents. Cloud networks allow companies to use virtual components instead of maintaining their own hardware. This reduces cost and maintenance efforts while providing flexible data storage and processing. Networks can also be open or closed. An open system is connected and ready for communication, while a closed system is isolated and non-communicative. Now, let's talk about network architecture, the structure of how devices are organized and interact. In a client-server architecture, one or more servers manage the data and requests from clients. For example, when you send an email or browse the web, you're interacting with a server. On the other hand, in a peer-to-peer -peer network, all devices or peers can act as both clients and servers. This decentralized approach is commonly used in blockchain technology. Network topology defines the layout of a network, how devices are connected. A mesh topology connects each device to every other device in the network, ensuring fast communication but requiring complex setup. It's often used in military communications. In a star topology, all devices are connected to a central hub, which manages the data transmission. This setup is common in home networks. Finally, a bus topology links all devices to a single communication line. It's simple and efficient for small networks, but not ideal for larger ones. Let's imagine you're searching for something online using your smartphone or laptop. The first thing that happens is your device connects wirelessly to a wireless access point. This WAP acts as a bridge, linking your wireless device to your home network. Once the WAP receives your search request, it passes it along to a switch. The switch's job is to direct this data to the appropriate device within your network. But since your search request needs to reach the internet, the switch forwards it to the router. The router now takes over, determining the best path for your data to travel to reach the internet. It sends your request out into the vast network of networks we call the internet, directing it to the appropriate web server that hosts the website you're trying to access. Along the way, your data might pass through a repeater, especially if the distance is great or the signal is weak. The repeater boosts the signal, ensuring that your data reaches its destination intact. The web server receives your request, processes it, and then sends the requested information, like a web page, back through the internet, following the reverse path. The data is received by your router, then passed to the switch, which directs it back to the WAP. Finally, the WAP transmits the data wirelessly to your device, where the web page is displayed in your browser. In this entire process, the data packet travels through a sequence of devices, each performing a specific role to ensure your search request is processed efficiently and accurately. If you found this video helpful and want to stay informed about more topics like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Your feedback is always appreciated, 
so feel free to leave a comment or a like to let us know what you think. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.